gonna work on the Kevlar templates for the rear bumper pan next. As in my normal fashion, I show you what the end product looks like, then we go through the steps of how I got there. And this stuff is not very fun to work with. It is, in my opinion, not that high quality. So we're gonna do each panel separately. We're not gonna try to bend this or get it to conform to any weird shapes. As you notice, I'm not being very accurate drawing these lines. I want them to be a little bit long just so that I can ensure there's no gaps between them. just so I use the least amount of material possible. Looking at the real car, you can tell the patterns don't line up. They're not very concerned about it being pretty. It's all about function. So I am well, being careless, and I'm just gonna say that I'm doing it to match the real car. We could kinda get away doing that with this stuff, because it's all squares. As I mentioned earlier, I also left these a little bit oversized just so that we could position them a little bit. I am still just going to try to line them up the best I can, however, it is not my primary concern. I'll just skip ahead here, it's just me putting these decals down in place now. Not very exciting. Once I got them all laid out and they were dry, I went over them with a bit of Tamiya smoke just to make them look kind of worn and old. I, for the life of me, could not get this engine assembly to sit where it needed to sit. I messed with this for maybe 20-30 minutes.
I'd eventually found the problem here. I put two coats of paint on everything just to ensure that it's covered. And that made that fitment so tight that it would not slide into place. So I ended up just forcing it here with the end of a paintbrush. that was seated and drove home where it needed to be, everything just fell into place. Another well-engineered kit. And as always for parts that may need positioning, I like to use this slow setting glue. This chassis tub needs to align at eight different points. So I did not want it to get locked in place before I could line them all up. stuff is kind of nice because it too is a solvent so I'm able to scrape the paint off there like that using just the glue to ensure a good plastic to plastic fit. And one last thing I wanted to add is a bit of a custom touch. I'm using braided wire on the oil cooler and the heat exchangers. This stuff is made by Protec and I believe it's the 30,000th diameter. Don't quote me on that, but it's pretty close.
realize this is out of frame. They're not missing much. All I'm doing is just doing a very tight 90 degree bend just so that they could fit under it. Right about here, I realized I cut this stuff way too long. On the real car, it all meets up in a bulkhead just beside the transmission. Here it is, cut the link. You can see how much I wasted. I have also experimented with some templates for the heat shields that are on the one to one car. There's one that goes over the three exhaust pipes, and then one up above that goes over the blow off valve. These were just made out of cardstock, so if I do like to use them, they'll be sturdy enough to use as a template. And I'm really only showing you the process here because I did decide to go with them. I'm using an old piece of for sale sign that just luckily happened to be exactly the right size I needed. I'm using that little metal ruler as a sort of mandrel just to help me straighten it back out after the edges got furry when I cut it. Marking this here so I know where it cut out. I am just lightly scoring these just to help me bend and fold it a little bit easier later. I tried really hard just to get that to sit there to give you an idea of what it looks like. It did not go so well. And that's pretty much it for this video. Here's some photos of the finished product. I again want to thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, you know how this works by now.